Hi, um, today I will continue weaving on my robe and uh, forgiving myself for um, being so far away from it for a while. Anyway, um, and uh, I'll just uh, read a story from the Masset text. No, it's called the Haida text Masset dialect. Um, it's a rare book, and these stories um, aren't commonly told anymore. Um, they are family and clan stories that are passed down. But um, in our culture, those stories are um, intellectual property. So um, not everybody had the right to uh, hear the stories and of course not everybody had the right to tell the stories so um, but these stories were given to um, Swanton in the early 1900s he came here in 1900 he was here in 1901 and uh, then he came back uh, and he went up to Kagani Haida so they have stories that they gave him and then he even went up um, a few years later up to the Clinkets. So um, he took down their stories. And um, he depended on translators. So we know he listed a few of the names of the people who translated for him. And uh, so they went to storytellers and then this translator would listen to those stories and tell them to um, John Reed Swanton and then then they would phonetically uh, write those uh, words down because our stories were always oral. So my theory is that we really remembered those stories because um, we um, were actually hypnotized into, um, as we were listening to stories, the storytellers had the uh, knack of getting us really into the setting of these stories and living them as the, as he told those stories. Another theory is that um, that uh, in the dirges and the songs that they um, have elements of the story so that you can remember those stories. And, and then also our clothing, um, they have the crest designs and the patterns that are from these stories and so our our clothing our pneumatic um, garments that uh, reminded us of our our stories of our place of our family of our ancestors adventures and um, so uh, the stories were very important and so I am going to weave um, and you'll see my weaving but you'll hear me speak um, and uh, read these, these stories from the Masset, uh, the Masset dialect that he took. So, however, joining me. Land Otter Woman and Her Husband. Land Otter Woman and her husband came to Land Otter Town, and they were there two nights. Human beings were afraid to stay there, and while they slept, the Land Otter people carried off the woman's yellow cedar bark blanket. And when morning came, they discovered that it was gone. And as the man hunted about, the women wept. They heard the land otter saying, wah, wah, in the woods. Still, she was afraid to go up and look at them. The people were playing with her yellow cedar bark blanket. So they made a noise together. And they also heard someone singing there. The song was like this. Ha! Yellow cedar bark blanket. Ho! Yellow cedar bark blanket. The yellow cedar bark blanket is gone in the morning. Ho! Yellow cedar bark blanket. Ho! Yellow cedar bark blanket. The yellow cedar bark blanket is gone in the morning. Ho! Yellow cedar bark blanket. Then they went up to see them. Then they looked at them stealthily and the land otters stopped playing with her yellow cedar bark blanket, and the land otter people went away. But they did not know whither the land otters had gone, and they also came down to the canoe, 
and when they had got down, they went away. And they went over to the other side of Masset Inlet, and they came down to Strong Tide. They went down the inlet, and while they were going down, they saw very many people standing upon the beach. The people sang and danced, and then they stopped in front of the people and looked at them. At that time, the people stopped dancing, and they started away. And when they went away, they knew that the people were land otters. Before that, they were like people. When the land otters danced, they saw that they had imported songs. The end. So I like that story because it, it has, um, it refers to the yellow cedar bark uh, blankets. So, um, but what's interesting about cedar bark is that it's highly allergic. I mean, people get really allergic to it. And uh, so I often think when they talk about the yellow cedar bark blankets, that they probably were uh, made out of cedar bark because they were flexible. But also they may have had um, the inner fur of uh, sea otter um, to, uh, so that that would touch the skin and not the, the, um, the, the uh, ce yellow cedar bark, which would was, like I say, a lot of saps, sap, and a lot of people are allergic, and it can be, um, ha be not comfortable wearing it. Okay, so the man with the fish trap is the next story. A man made a fish trap, and he put his fish trap into the creek, and when it was completed, he went home, and the next day, he went to see it. And after he had fastened his canoe to the fish trap, he went up and he looked into his fish trap and there were many salmon in it and he took them out. Then he took young cedar limbs and he strung them on it and he went down to his canoe with them and he put the salmon into his canoe. He lived in a town and he was the only one who caught salmon. This was his creek and when he came back, he gave the salmon to his friends. And next day he went there again, and after he had fastened his, can his canoe, he went up to his fish trap, and he looked into his fish trap, and there were no salmon in it, and he saw that his fish trap had a hole in it, and then his mind was very sick, and he strengthened his fish trap, and he returned home, and he arrived without any salmon. The next day he went to look at it again, and again he had fastened his canoe. He went to the fish trap, and when he looked at his fish trap, he did not see any salmon in it again. And then he examined his fish trap again, and he saw that it had a hole in it. And before he mended it, he wanted to examine the footprints of the creature that caused it. And he saw footprints of the black bear, and he again went to his fish trap. He said, how those eaters of raw flesh break through my fish trap. Then he strengthened it and went home. And he used bad words to them. He knew they were black bears. The next day he went thither again, and he again fastened his canoe. And again he went up to his fish trap. And before he looked at his fish trap, two persons came to him, and they wore small bearskins as blankets. Their cheeks were also blackish. They were very fine-looking men, and they called to him. They said to him, Go with us. They said to him, We come from a very good town. And he went with them. He went with them to a very far land. But the trail was very good, and when he had become tired out walking, they came to a big lake, and he saw a town upon the other side. He looked across. The smoke was like a comb, and they called a cross. I guess that um, was like a comb. Is There's a note that says a common simile to indicate the thickness of smoke and the number of fires. And they called a cross. Then they came over to take them, and he got into the canoe with them. And he started with them. Then they went into the house of the bear chief. 
and after they had taken him in, they cooked salmon for him, and when it was cooked, they made him lie down. The salmon was roasted, and they put salmon upon his heart. Do you feel it? You who said that we eat raw things? They said to him. And when he got up, they placed salmon in front of him, and he ate it. He was there all winter. And during the night, the bear people all went hunting, and a certain woman was in the house. She was half stone. She was not a bear. She was a human being like us. Then she called the man. She said to him, Chief, come here. When you go to get wood, do not get dry stuff. Get wet things. And when he went to get things, he got only wet stuff. And when they returned in the evening, they made a fire, and his was kindled. And in the evening, just before all returned, he made a fire. Then he came out, then they came out of their skins, and they became like human beings, and they hung up their skins in the house. And he watched them do this way for a long time. And he also got firewood for them, but the chief did not go to hunt with them. And when it was a fine night, all went out, and he went to bathe with the chief. Then they came to the water hole in which the chief used to bathe. Then he came out of his skin, and he, the man, took care of his skin. Then the chief went to the water and entered it. Then he dived three times and sat down in the water again. Then he, the man, ran off with his skin. And the woman had given him hair combings, and she also gave him a liquid. When you see all coming very near you, throw down some of this, and the land will be full of fallen trees. And when they can't come near you again, pour part of this upon the ground, she said to him. Then he ran from the town with the chief's skin, and they followed him in, in crowds, and the chief was with them. And when they got near him, he threw part of the hair combings behind him. Then the country became covered with fallen trees, and the bears were unable to go through them. While they were there, he got far ahead, and when they got near him again, he poured out part of the liquid, and there was a big lake behind him. And while they went around this, he got far away from them again, and they again came near him. Then he again threw down the hair combings. Then the land again became covered with fallen trees, and again he ran away from them. Then they again came close upon him, and he poured out all the liquid, and another big lake came into existence behind him. And while they were running around the lake, he got to his canoe, and his canoe was still there. And then he threw his bear skin into the canoe, and he went away in haste with it. And after he got well out to sea, the bear came down running. He was like a human being and said to him, Give me my skin. And while he was speaking, he began to melt. But his skin in the canoe grew, and he made himself melt. But his skin became a whole bear in the canoe, and he came to the town with it. And then his friends were very much pleased to see him. They thought he was dead. Then he cooked the bear meat, and when it was cooked, he called the people for the food. And then all entered his house, and he put it before them. And while they were eating, he told them about himself. And when they were through eating, they left him and went home, and all got into their houses. And not many days afterwards, they received news. They said that the black bear people, the grizzly bear people, the beaver people, the wolf people, and the deer people were going to make war on human beings. And then the people built a stockade, and they made ten rows around the fort, and it was completed. And when the fort was finished, the animals came to war. All the animals came, and they tried to overthrow the fort, and they pulled the stockades over with their teeth, and the human beings also shot the animals with their arrows, and they killed them. And the animals did not kill a single person. And when one stockade was left and the animals saw that they were going to be killed, they were afraid and all went back and they did not kill a single person. Then after that, the people began to bring home the dead bodies to eat and part began to give out a stench. They were unable to eat all 
the end. So I like that story because um, it talks about transformation through um, taking on and off your skin and that the people of the animal people were very much like the human peoples in their own houses and their own villages and that um, they were insulted because the hunter had said that they were um, eat, eating raw so they kidnapped him to show him that they they were like uh, they were like humans they ate things from the fire anyway so um, I recently was watching a 60 minutes and it was a lady who was from uh, the States who went to uh, Mongolia to learn how to train um, the eagles and um, so she was uh, she uh, had a, a close relationship with the, the people the Mon Mongolian people and their she learned about their culture and how they um, had this intimate relationship with the eagles that helped them uh, they caught them, they tamed them, they fed them, they trained them, and um, and worked with them, and then ultimately let them go as they got older. But um, the old people, the ancient people, the Haidas, had um, relationships with the animals around them in their environment, too. And that uh, at the end of the 60 Minutes, they were talking about how it was so important to... Um, maintain that knowledge of the human and the animal relationships and that the world would lose uh, quite a lot of wisdom uh, without um, knowing and continuing to know the wisdom of working with animals and, um, and uh, having that intimate relationships and, and uh, so I, these stories, the Haida stories, have a lot of animals and adventures with the animals and marrying the animals and being kidnapped by the animals and traveling with the animals. There's lots of stories about our relationship with um, the people, the animal people around us. So how about for listening to, um, to me and watching me weave today? I hope you enjoyed the story. Hello. Bye.